All right guys, so today we're going to work on the 65 and we're going to upgrade the rear end in this car. This rear end is an 8 inch factory rear end. It had 280 uh, gear ratio in it. So that's not acceptable with the build that we're going to be doing. So we're going to take the, the uh, rear end out of the car and we're going to rebuild it with a new center section. We're going to put a 355 posi rear end center section in it and we're getting new bearings put on the axles which have already been done and then we're going to take this out we're going to clean it we're going to degrease it we're going to freshen it up and then we're going to put a disc brake kit on it as well so let, let me just show you some of the parts that we have and where we're going to go with it so this is the rear end in the car currently and you can see it's just the factory old um, oil leaking rear end so we're going to clean that up the axles have been removed. We've got new bearings on them, and the axles are right here. So here are the axles. We had the new bearings pressed on the axles, and that's the bearings here. We're gonna cover those up and clean up the plates here and then in the outside of the hubs. We're gonna clean those up and paint those. But we also got the center section. So let me show you that real quick. This was done by Quick Performance. And basically, I went online and was able to order everything that I wanted for the rear end. Um, here's their tag. And it tells you basically what oil to use, that you do need a, a, a posi additive, and then it has the break-in cycles on it. So all the instructions are very clear on it. You can see everything has been rebuilt and, and cleaned up. And then the back side of it here Here's the gears and the posi unit, and you can see everything is brand new bearing, brand new everything. So instead of rebuilding the, the center section that I have, uh, I just decided it would be quicker and easier to order the center section with the posi, with the gears that I wanted. Let's get this rear end out of this car and get it rebuilt. So now the axle's out of the car. Uh, we're going to clean up the inside. I'm going to use degreaser. Um, brake cleaner actually is, works very well on this. So we're going to clean up the inside of that housing. Uh, we're going to replace the gasket. And we're just going to clean up in all of the, the rust. We're going to put new seals inside here. Uh, new axle seals. And then we're also going to put a new vent. This vent is for a uh, single exhaust car so the vents different on a v8 car so we're going to change that out as well but uh, we're just going to start uh, cleaning this thing up this is just a quick picture of the old versus the new center section that's going into the car now i'm just starting the overall degreasing of the rear end and removing the old seal that was on it brake cleaner works very well to get a lot of the oils and greases off and now here I'm using a wire wheel on a grinder to get the rust and the heavy grit off the outside of the rear end. I'm not too worried at this point about getting dirt inside the rear end because the inside is going to be cleaned thoroughly here shortly. Now it's time to remove the inner seals and I'm using a long piece of square tubing to punch out the seals and then I'll rotate it to hit it on the other side and it pops right out. Now I'm using a wire brush and brake cleaner uh, to clean the inside axle tubes. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of dirt and thick oil that builds up behind the seals.
got the axle tube in a five gallon bucket to aid in keeping the shop clean and keeping the oil in one spot. I'm using a rag and a long rod to clean and remove all the residue from the brake cleaner and to make sure that the inner tube is spotless and clean. Now that the inside is clean, it's time to turn to the outside. I'm using a wax and grease remover to remove all traces of oils and grease and then blowing it out with an air hose uh, prior to paint. All traces of dirt and grease have been removed from the inner axle tubes and housing. I'm using engine enamel to paint the rear end because it's durable and it dries quickly. Now we're gonna turn our attention to the axle seals. This is the axle seal here, and this is the way it goes into the rear end. If you look on the inside here, there's a spring. That side goes in towards the differential. This is the side that goes in, and this is the side that we're gonna tap in just like that. I use Permatex oil resistant sealant around the uh, seals. I put it on the outside of the seal before it goes in. It just helps to ensure a leak-free seal. Now I'm just tapping in the seal using an old socket and I'm going around making sure that it seats evenly into the housing. Now I'm turning my attention to the center section and we're going to put the gasket on there. I'm putting a small bead of oil resistant silicone all the way around the housing. You don't need a lot here, just a small bead to help ensure a leak free seal. Now I'm going around the outside of the, the bolt holes Now I'm laying the gasket on top and, and just smoothing that out with my finger to get any air bubbles or anything out so it's nice and um, tight. And I'll put another bead of silicone all the way around that gasket as well, repeating the same steps as earlier. And now it's time to install the center section.
Now it's time to install the disc brake kit. This kit here is from Lead Brakes. The first part of the install is to install this bracket onto the axle flange. The kit comes with two different size spacers. With this install we're going to use the thicker spacer. Next is the caliper bracket. I'm putting the bolt on temporarily so I can snug everything up. Now I'm putting a light coat of oil on the inner axle seals prior to putting the axles into the tube. Now I have to remove those temporary nuts that I put on prior to securing the axle. There are two spacers that are required to be installed. Once the axle is seated properly, spacers go in there to take up space for the mounting bracket. and the axle flange is bolted together to hold everything together. The caliper comes pre-packed with the brake pads inside and there's a piece of cardboard that you need to remove. Simply slide the caliper into place and install it with the two bolts. Here's the completed rear end with everything attached. Here is the proper mounting bracket, flexible brake hose, and vent tube for the dual exhaust rear end. If you find value in these videos, please like, subscribe, and share.